So my talk, my first talk, is going to be on the role, basically, of nephron sparing surgery uh, for the treatment for the surgical management of uh, la large renal masses. The, um, as you know, kidney cancer is a, as any other um, cancerous disease, is treated based on stage. And uh, we, as urologists, as urologic surgeons, are um, mostly involved in the. Uh, uh, early stages of the disease, and where uh, that, uh, that are, th those are the stages where uh, we see most commonly this patient uh, coming uh, to our uh, clinics. Um, and uh, the um, current guidelines recommend certainly um, a uh, partial nephrectomy, so nephron sparing surgery is the preferred treatment option for uh, in cases where you have a uh, so-called small real mass, which is the one that uh, uh, corresponds to a stage T1, clinical stage T1, or less than four centimeter uh, uh, size-wise, um, or also for larger masses, uh, still in clinical stage one, still, still a localized disease, uh, between four and seven centimeter. Again, that is a possibility to do a partial nephrectomy whenever uh, they say is technically feasible. And that, of course, depends also on the surgeon. Um, and the same, the EAU, the AUA, the ASCO, basically they recommend the same thing. Uh, whereas radical nephrectomy is still the standard option for clinical uh, stage two masses, those who are above seven <coughs> centimeters, who are, of course, more uh, uh, challenging uh, in, 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 in terms of um, uh, surgical uh, planning. Uh, if we look at the uh, series published over the past 15 years on uh, partial nephrectomy, uh, and, and as you can see, most of them are from large population-based studies from the United States. Uh, they are mostly um, focused on the treatment of, uh, uh, again, small renal masses, so T1 uh, cancer. Um, and uh, you can also see that partial nephrectomy as a treatment option, which again is recommended uh, from the guidelines, by the guidelines as a preferred option, um, is still uh, under underused. Uh, where you, as you can see, the um, they can, you know, utilization rate is, um, it be, can go uh, as low as uh, uh, 20, 18 percent. Uh, 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 so it's, it's uh, still, uh, there's still a room for improvement. Certainly, there's been an increase in partial nephrectomy use over the years, uh, but still there is some, uh, um, uh, some uh, room for improvement. And uh, this, of course, uh, is, uh, and this is one of the, these studies uh, looking, uh, 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 splitting down uh, between um, uh, less than four and, and uh, more than four centimeters, between four and seven, so T1A and T1B. Uh, certainly, in T1B, uh, the, the use of, of partial nephrectomy is still uh, um, uh, very low. Um, in, in, in all this picture, I think a, a big role is now playing robotic surgery. This is a very nice study uh, by, done by um, uh, some, uh, some of uh, esteemed colleagues. Uh, one of them is Dr. Dr. Shulam here, uh, which is here, uh, who is here with us. And they basically look at the NIS the database and um, uh, over 20,000 cases. And basically, they try to predict the use of partial nephrectomy versus radical nephrectomy and see what are the parameters that can impact the use of one over the others. And they, 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 they see, they saw basically, they found basically, of course, in academic centers, large centers are more prone to use partial nephrectomy. Uh, urban centers are more prone. But also one of the factors that they found to be significant was the, fa was the fact of the hospital having a robotic system. Basically, hospital with a robot, they, 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 they tended to use more, uh, to apply more partial nephrectomies uh, to treat this patient. Um, and certainly, uh, the, uh, this is because uh, robotic surgery uh, allows to perform a minimally invasive uh, surgery, uh, nephron sparing surgery, uh, by offering uh, faster recovery uh, and is easier, technically easier than laparoscopic um, uh, partial nephrectomy surgery. Uh, this is a study, a study we did a few years ago when we defined the trifecta as a, a measure of uh, surgical quality, so negative surgical margin. Uh, you know, warm, short warm ischemia time, no complication. Basically, uh, everything you need, you want as a surgeon when you perform a, a partial nephrectomy, um, of course, it doesn't relate to any long-term functional or, or oncological data, but it's a measure of quality, as I said. And uh, we basically see so that uh, 500 cases by, by, the, same, by the same surgeon, uh, laparoscopic or robotic, and uh, the surgeon was, was able basically uh, to achieve a higher trifecta rate uh, uh, in a shorter time, uh, these are, this is divided by 
Each one of these is 50 cases. So in a shorter time, the refractor rate was higher when using the robot for partial nephrectomy. Um, and again, this is because the, the robot allows you to see better, have more, um, 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 have more um, uh, surgery to be, is easier, technically easier, because the, the instrument, the technology allows you to also to use some tools as ultra, ultrasound, intraoperative ultrasound, and uh, the, uh, the endoris technology, of course, allows you to, uh, to approach these masses, even complex masses, um, in an in a easier fashion. Uh, now, uh, we said that partial nephrectomy is certainly used for small renal masses over radical nephrectomy. Why? Because uh, it can offer, it does not compromise, as been shown this by several studies, the oncological outcomes, so there is no risk to compromise uh, the oncological outcomes, but it can offer a, a better recovery of uh, um, a renal function, and this is pretty intuitive, and of course it can trans this can translate into, into a better uh, survival. Uh, however, we always talk about you know, we want to have level one evidence, and uh, this is a case where we have uh, level one evidence. This is the, the well-known ERTC trial, which is the only um, available randomized trial comparing partial to radical nephrectomy for uh, uh, masses uh, lower than five centimeter. And uh, these studies basically show that uh, actually partial, partial nephrectomy did not result in the so you know so many expected uh, better outcomes than better ne uh, than than radical nephrectomy as it was supposed to be. Um, there's been a, a, of course a huge discussion about this study that is biased. Uh, it was closed earlier uh, because it was difficult to recruit patients. Um, in other words, it's certainly not a perfect study. Uh, but the, 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 you know, and the message of this study that yes, partial nephrectomy can preserve renal function, but it can, but probably does not translate into a, a, a better outcome in terms of overall survival. Um, this is uh, one of the well-cited and largest meta-analyses on the on the treatment of uh, of um, small renal masses with the nephron sparing versus radical surgery. Uh, Simon Kim did it, and. Uh, Basically, they included uh, 36 um, uh, studies with over 40,000 patients. This, again, this is in the setting of small renal masses. Uh, the partial nephrectomy, again, uh, showed better uh, a, a reduction in uh, all-cause mortality, uh, in cancer-specific mortality, and in also in, de in developing severe CKD. Uh, but the bias here, this is a meta-analysis, not of randomized studies, meta-analysis of retrospective case control studies, so, uh, you know, there's always this issue of, uh, of uh, the, the downside of doing meta-analysis of, of this type, and so basically there was a, a selection bias probably in favor of partial nephrectomy. This is a more, more recent meta-analysis where the authors only looked at 26 studies, only looking at the functional cardiovascular outcomes, and they found the, uh, again, that partial nephrectomy, they confirmed to be uh, to be was was confirmed to be better in terms of reducing uh, the uh, the onset of CKD after the surgery, whereas there was no difference between the two in terms of overall death or cardiovascular death. What about now the larger masses? We also performed recently a, a meta-analysis that was published last year. Uh, we basically look into uh, an, in the analysis about 20 case uh, 20 case studies case control studies over 11,000 patients. As you can see in this case, uh, different from the other meta-analysis, we focus on the uh, T1B, T2 uh, masses. Basically, um, all these studies were focused on larger masses. And uh, as you can see here also, I want to point out that this is more in the open laparoscopic era versus robotic era. Um, and uh, the main findings uh, of, of this meta-analysis were was that um, certainly radical nephrectomy uh, implies less uh, less risk of complication if you do a radical nephrectomy for these larger masses versus a nephron sparing uh, surgery. But on the other end, the partial nephrectomy it can allow a better preservation again of the renal <coughs> function. Again, uh, very intuitive. Um, uh, however, we also found these that also can be. Uh, explained by the uh, uh, selection bias in the in the studies. Again, this also is a meta-analysis of retrospective case control studies, not of, of randomized studies. We don't have randomized studies for in this uh, subset of patients. And the only uh, one study I'm aware of, uh, specifically in the subset of clinical T2 kidney cancer, is one from reported by, by the San Diego here, the San Diego group here, Dr. Darwish and colleagues, uh, who basically uh, look at uh, 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 their series, and they found basically that the, the benefit of doing a partial versus a radical in this patient disappear uh, when, have, when you have a renal score higher than 10. 
And of course, they also found that partial nephrectomy carries a high, in these patients carry a high risk of bleeding and uh, urine leak. And, and just because uh, it, you, you have to do more resection, more manipulation, more reconstruction, and this is even worse than you do it w when you treat a larger mass. Um, trying to find some answer to this, que to this question or try to address this topic, so again, the role of, of partial nephrectomy uh, and specifically of robotic partial nephrectomy for larger urine masses, uh, we recently created this uh, registry including about 20 centers worldwide where the, we collected um, uh, cases of partial nephrectomies done robotically, laparoscopic radical nephrectomies, and, and robo uh, robotic radical nephrectomies for clinical T2 masses and above. And uh, some of the abstract will be presented at the upcoming EUA and EAU meeting. And uh, here I just want to mention this one on, uh, which is the, the, far, the first manuscript we put out is under uh, consideration in, in, a, in, a, in a, to be for, for to be published in a, in a journal, and uh, this is to, about the outcomes of robotic for again clinical T2 masses. Uh, overall, we we were able to uh, collect about 300 cases. Uh, these are the outcomes here. Uh, as you can see, the, the, the warm ischemia time is uh, the median warm ischemia time. Is if you compare to reported series for smaller masses, is longer. Um, uh, the uh, complication rates are uh, are quite acceptable. Uh, the positive margin uh, rate is higher than what you would expect in a series for small renal masses. And uh, uh, we also did an analysis to predict the post operative complication. Of course, stage, uh, higher stage, uh, higher tumor size was, was correlated with post operative complication. Um, and this is also some oncological data. Of course, uh, this is a, a limitation that the short follow up of 12 months. Uh, so, uh, but again, we are still uh, kind of analyzing the data, trying to understand if we can get some information from them. Uh, in all these uh, pictures, I would like also to introduce another concept, which was, has been, uh, this has been uh, supported by a few studies by Dr. Campbell and, and Brian Lane um, uh, 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 from the Cleveland Clinic, uh, this basically uh, stating that there, is, there are two different CKD. One is the CKD. Uh, that is caused by medical conditions, diabetes, uh, cardiovascular disease. The other is a CKD that you develop after you have, for example, a kidney removed, for, uh, so which is what they call post-surgical CKD. And probably the two are not the same in terms of affecting the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the kidney function of the patient uh, at, in the long term. Um, so basically they say that, the, 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 they saw in, in this study, for example, that the patient with CKD, surgical CKD, uh, in the long term, they had the same survival curves of, of an overall population. The same thing in this, in this other study of over 4,000 patients follow for 10 years, so, so a long follow-up. Uh, the, the CKD surgical was associated with, with, with a more stable renal function. Uh, and this translates from a clinical standpoint, from a surgical management standpoint to by saying, okay, so maybe select patient with uh, T2, T1 cancer might not, can be managed by radical nephrectomy. There's no, nothing bad to do in radical nephrectomy because probably if they have a, a normal kidney function, uh, that would not impact their uh, long, uh, you know, long term uh, renal function. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, there is a lot to, uh, uh, to keep in mind. Uh, you have to do what is called a trade-off analysis. Uh, basically, you have to consider um, the old picture on one, from one side, the patient characteristics, age, comorbidities, what is the baseline kidney function, that's probably one of the most important thing to consider, uh, and also the tumor complexity, so that, that means not only the size, also the location of the tumor. Uh, we have ren renal nephrometry score, complexity score to do that. Uh, and of course, the surgical expertise comes into the play. Uh, it's, uh, you have surgeons who are comfortable in doing a nephron sparing surgery with an open approach, that's fine. Others, they do it with a laparoscopic approach, that also, that's also fine, uh, or robotically. Um, and then you have to discuss with the patient, this comes into question when you discuss with the patient in terms of uh, uh, counseling preoperatively, uh, you know, uh, set the expectation and, and uh, try to then make the right choice for, for that specific patient. Uh, this panel of experts, the uh, basically uh, propose a randomized study, which is what we want to have at the end to try to have an answer. Uh, and as I said, the ERTC, ERTC study did not give us an answer, unfortunately. 
Uh, this, this other one would be something that uh, these experts in the field propose. Uh, so a study uh, focusing on these larger masses in uh, electric conditions, so with a normal control other kidney, randomized, try to see, um, uh, to look at the uh, different outcomes here. Uh, I think it's probably doable. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's gonna be ever done, uh, to be honest, but uh, uh, probably these are the type of studies that uh, uh, we need to, to, so, so, to have a better idea of uh, what to do. So in terms of uh, uh, take home messages, uh, I think we can say that uh, partial nephrectomy is the way to go. Uh, however, probably does not translate uh, into a clinical benefit for any patient, uh, for all patients with their renal mass uh, when, when it's uh, technically feasible. Um, certainly as a consolidated role, and it represents the, the way to go for simple renal masses, more renal masses, uh, uh, or limited status, size and, and lower stage. Uh, and certainly there is still a problem uh, nationwide and worldwide uh, regarding the lower utilization of partial nephrectomy for these small renal masses. Um, on the other side, partial nephrectomy can also represent an option for larger tumor for very selected cases. Uh, however, radical nephrectomy remains the standard, but uh, if, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, I think we can offer for some of these patients uh, a nephron sparing approach. And I think I'm done with this. Thank you.